So welcome, my name is Daniele Agostini and I am a research group leader since 2000, October 2020 in the Max Planck Institute for Mathematics in the Sciences in Leipzig. I lead the research group in algebraic geometry. Today, I would like to tell you about a long-term research project of mine, which is that of studying and connecting between uh, some aspects of curves and their Kita functions. These aspects uh, are about the algebra, the geometry and the physics of this object. I will focus uh, on the work that I've done in the last year and especially in that, that I've done since I've come to the Institute. So let's start. The protagonists of today are algebraic curves. What are they? So they are um, one dimensional varieties. So they are zero loci of polynomial equations inside the affine space C to the N or inside the projective space P to the N. One example is given by this illustration. On one side, you see the algebraic aspect, which is uh, in this case a quartic equation in two variables. And uh, on the other side, you see the geometric pictures. So at least the real points of this curve look like a plane curve of degree four. So the degree four can be seen from the fact that the line, a general one, intersects it in four distinct points. And um, so what's important it's, uh, about curves is that they have dimension one, so complex dimension one. When curves are smooth, such as our example here, then they are also called the Riemann surfaces. So uh, this means that they are compact complex manifolds of dimension one. Any such compact complex manifold is topologically a torus with G holes, and G is called the genus of the Riemann surface and it's, uh, it's most important invariant. For example, in the case of our quartic here, the torus has genus three, the complex uh, Riemann surface has genus three, and you can see a cartoon of it uh, down here. Um, on the other side, any uh, compact complex manifold dimension one, so any Riemann surface is also an algebraic curve. So this is, uh, um, a place where we have like a very fruitful marriage between algebraic and complex geometry, meaning that we can both we can use both algebraic and complex methods, complex transcendental methods to study these objects. Okay. But uh, so this was a bit of algebra and geometry of the curves, but they also have a physical aspect. The physical aspect comes through the KP equation. So the KP equation is uh, the following uh, um, partial differential equations in three variables, x, y, and t. And it describes the evolution in time t of a water wave in two dimension, x and y. In particular, the, this corresponds to waves in shallow water. It is a generalization to two dimension of the famous uh, KDV equation. So this is a uh, um, an equation which is very important to mathematicians because it has very important properties, but it's also useful to practitioners. For example, here in the picture taken from Wikipedia, you can see actual water waves of the coast of France. And uh, it turns out that such a configuration of waves can be described effectively from the KP equation. So this is a topic both in mathematics and in the real world, so to say. So it's really a mathematics in the sciences. But how are our curves connected to water waves? Well, the connection comes through Riemann's theta function. And to define it, we first recall the notion of a Riemann matrix. So a Riemann matrix is a G times G complex symmetric matrix with positive definite imaginary part. And it's usually denoted by tau. How do we obtain such a matrix from a curve? Well, we have, uh, um, if the curve has genus G, we have uh, a basis of G holomorphic differentials on the curve, so omega one up to omega G, and then we can integrate uh, these bases uh, along uh, a special set of cycles, again, B1 to BG. For example, you can think of these cycles uh, as the blue cycles depicted here. So the, I, put the quotation marks because this is not uh, maybe the 100% uh, correct uh, definition, but it's uh, good enough for the spirit of our talk. So it's uh, 
the thing to remember is that the Riemann function remembers the information about integrating differential forms on our Riemann surface. So, out of this um, Riemann curve, now we can define the Riemann theta function that was introduced by Riemann himself. So this is, uh, um, you can see it here, it's an infinite sum of exponential. The sum is over the multidimensional lattice, z to the g, and uh, each summand is the exponential of a quadratic form in tau and a linear form depending on the complex vector z. This is a fundamental function throughout mathematics. It appears in many different contexts, in algebra and geometry, such as here, in mathematical physics, such as in the KP equation, but also in places such as probability, statistics, and cryptography. For example, one point of view uh, that uh, may be different from the algebraic one on this object is that it is a discrete analog of the Gaussian curve. So this has many important properties. One of them is that it's, uh, um, its convergence is very fast, so it can be computed effectively on a computer. Uh, there are various computer algebra systems that are able to do that. For example, you can do that in Maple, in Sage, and most recently in Julia, thanks to a software package called Tita.jl that was developed by Lin Chua and myself while I was a postdoc here at the Institute and Lin was a visiting student, PhD student from Berkeley. Okay, let's come now to our water waves. Well, this is uh, uh, a result of Kritschever from the 70s that if you have uh, a smooth curve of genus G and the corresponding Riemann matrix tau, then you can find a solution of the KP equation of this form. So it's like a second logarithmic derivative of the theta function where you replace the argument z with a linear combination ux plus vy plus wt. And this, uh, uh, for, certain, for a certain choice of the vectors u, v, and w. So I would like to stress that everything here is very concrete and computable. For example, here you can see an example of a water wave that comes from a smooth plane quartic curve. In particular, this is the trot curve that we are going to see later. And we computed this example with our software package theta.jl. So it was a bit of introduction to the subject of the KP equation. Now let us come to the sum of the results that we have obtained. So first we see here that uh, from a um, specific curve, the KP solution are classified by the vectors u, v, and w. Dubrovin studied the, the possible vectors u, v, and w that will solve the KP equation, and he proved that they sweep a three-dimensional variety. In a joint project with Turkus Selik and Bernd Sturfels of the MPI that we did last year, we studied this variety from the point of view of algebraic geometry, and uh, we named it uh, the Dubrovin trifold uh, to honor the memory of Professor Dubrovin. In our paper, we offer different examples uh, uh, of um, computation of such a trifold, and we study some of its interesting properties. For example, we show that there exists an explicit toric degeneration of the Dubrovin trifold to a product of the canonical curve that we started from with a certain weighted projective plane. With such a degeneration, it's very easy to compute uh, uh, many interesting uh, algebraic and geometric objects, or, uh, properties of the Dubrovin trifold. Something else that was already observed by Dubrovin himself is that uh, the Dubrovin trifold allows to solve effectively the Torelli problem for curves. So what's that? Well, the classical Torelli the theorem asserts that uh, a curve can be recovered, so a smooth curve can be recovered uniquely up to isomorphism from its Riemann matrix tau. So um, uh, this is a very classical result uh, and it was foundational in algebraic geometry. It has been uh, replicated uh, uh, in, in uh, higher dimension, for example, for other surfaces or for surfaces or hypersurfaces. The point uh, of the Dubrovin trifold so one feature of the Dubrovin trifold is that uh, it gives us an effective way to recover a curve from the Riemann matrix tau. Well, what's the idea? One, 
idea is that uh, if you plug in such an, a function into the KP equation and you ask that it is a solution, then you will get some condition on u, v, and w that depend just on the metric stuff. In other words, we, are, we have uh, explicitly computable equations for the Dubrovin trifold that depends just on the Riemann metric stuff. Then another fact is that if you project the Dubrovin trifold onto the space of u coordinates, you will re recover a canonical model of uh, the curve you started from. In other words, if we carry out the completely algebraic procedure of uh, eliminating the variables v and w from the equations of uh, the previous point, we will get the equation for the canonical model of the original curve. So uh, from the matrix tau, we recovered uh, our original curve C. So this was already um, proposed by Dubrovin. And uh, in future work, uh, I plan on using uh, these ideas to tackle a different uh, and more difficult problem, the Schottky problem. So the Schottky problem is another classical problem in algebraic geometry, which asks uh, to um, decide uh, for any given Riemann matrix tau whether it comes from a Riemann surface or, or not. This is actually solved uh, um, in terms of the KP equation. So it was proven by Shiota that uh, a Riemann matrix tau comes from a Riemann surface if and only if there exist parameters u, v, and w such that uh, the expression over here is a solution to the KP. However, this is not effective, so it cannot be implemented on a computer, and I plan on uh, working on this in the future, starting with the first open case of genus four, 5, and this will work on, this will build on previous work that I've done together with Lin Chua. So this is for future work. In the meantime, I can show you that one can actually implement these uh, uh, Torelli reconstruction uh, algorithm effectively. So I've done it together with Turku Selik and Demir Eken this year. And uh, to, we implemented it in Julia. And I can show you an example here. So we start with um, algebraic curve, which is the trot curve in this case, is defined over the rational numbers. Uh, and it's a smooth quartic in three variables, u1, u2, and u3. So this is a smooth curve, so you will get um, a corresponding uh, three by three Riemann matrix. And now we can apply the procedure described before to this Riemann matrix. We do it in Julia, and then we will get back a numerical quartic equation. It's numerical because the theta function can be evaluated only numerical as it is a transcendental object. So it's numerical, but you can see here that the highlighted coefficients are really the same coefficients uh, uh, of the original curve, at least uh, up to numerical precision. And moreover, all the other spurious coefficients uh, are of um, size 10 to the minus 12. So um, you can actually recover the, the exact curve you started with if you round everything down to the closest integer. And this also highlights that uh, there is an arithmetic uh, uh, aspect of curve that can be taken into consideration, for example, this algorithm works uh, particularly well for curves that are defined over Q. In our paper, we will we work with similar example up to genus seven. Okay, so this was uh, part of the story for uh, a smooth curve. It's part of a very rich story, but one of the powerful aspects of algebraic geometry is that it allows us to deal with singular. Um, entities as well. In particular, um, we can consider the situation where a smooth curve degenerates to a rational nodal curve. So rational nodal curves are the simplest possible, so to say, singular curves made of uh, rational components that intersect at, uh, uh, transversally at nodes. We can see it in this cartoon. So on here, you see uh, an elliptic curve degenerating to a rational curve with one node. And uh, here you see the corresponding picture on the Riemann surface side. So, um, excuse me. So, when, uh, so we have such a degeneration process, which is very common in algebraic geometry. But this also has a parallel into the physics world. Indeed, uh, you one can see that when the um, curve, the smooth curve degenerates, degenerates to the rational nodal one, 
then the KP solution from the smooth curve degenerates to a so-called soliton solution, corresponding to the singular curve. Solitons are a um, very intensely to studied topic in mathematics, and they are connected to geometry, physics, but also other areas such as combinatorics, positive geometry, cluster algebras, and so on. Well, for example, how do we see explicitly this uh, degeneration of uh, KP solutions? Well, in a recent paper with Claudia Fevola, she's a member of my group and a PhD student supervised by Ben Strumpfes and myself, Jelena Manderstam, visiting PhD student from Berkeley, Ber and Ben Strumpfes, we studied these degenerations and the corresponding soliton solutions from the point of view of tropical geometry, which is a language particularly uh, well suited for dealing uh, with these kind of degenerations. Amongst other things, uh, we show that uh, under the degeneration, sorry, under this degeneration, the theta function for uh, the smooth curve, which is normally uh, an infinite sum of exponentials, will uh, 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 degenerate to a finite sum of exponential, which depends on a finite configuration of vertices C. Furthermore, we also show that uh, both the finite configuration C as well as the corresponding Dubrovin trifold, so the variety that uh, classifies all possible KP solution, so all possible solitons that you can solution that you can get from that, they can be described uh, both combinatorially and uh, uh, explicitly, so we have an effective algorithm to describe them. In future work, uh, this should be connected uh, into the language, uh, just it should be connected to the language of uh, moduli spaces, especially moduli spaces of curves uh, and abelian varieties in algebraic geometry. And this will be also very important to understand better the Schottky problem in this context. So this was for um, um, future work and past work. I can tell you something about current work. So um, first we consider the generation to rational nodal curves, but the curve can become even more singular. For example, in this case, uh, we have a cartoon that shows the degeneration of a um, smooth elliptic curve of genus one to a curve which is now a rational cuspidal curve. So not uh, a node anymore, but a cusp. So a slightly worse singularity. Well, in this case, uh, one can show the, at least in some example, that the corresponding theta function, which is usually a holomorphic function, so a power series, degenerates to a simple polynomial. So it uh, collapses down to a sum of uh, finitely many monomial terms. So I'm working together with uh, Turku Selik and John Little in classifying uh, such singular curves and the corresponding algebraic theta functions. It's uh, remarkable that such uh, uh, geometric entities should correspond to this time geometric uh, uh, sorry, rational solutions to the KP equation. Okay, so um, I, this was a, a brief uh, tour in the very rich and interesting world of uh, uh, theta functions and algebraic curves. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, here I leave you with the, the list of references that you can refer to. And of course, you can find everything also on my webpage. And with this, I thank you for your attention.